Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about separation of concerns. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, I have been told by a co-worker that separation of concerns opposes dependency injection. If so, how is that? Well, I, I don't know what this person is trying to say because I don't. I, I I would say that from my perspective, these two things go very much hand in hand. Now, de like dependency injection and separation of concerns, I would say that they are in anything that is non-trivial. Like the, the, it, it is a given that these two these two concepts will exist together. So I'm not sure what your coworker means with opposing each other because in essence if you have a piece of logic of any type of like substantial complexity which is a given like unless you're making like the most simple rest thing ever where you're just putting like a thin database access layer uh, in a control method where you hit that endpoint and then you get some data well that's you know that's following the single response, single principle, or single responsibility rule right there. But usually that's not what's going on. You usually have very quickly situations where you're doing things such as logging from logging information. You are do, going to do things such as gathering. You might be um, creating producing events based on the fact that somebody's making an, an access somewhere. It's very common that you have endpoints that when you actually hit that endpoint it has some type of what I like to call the, the main thing it does which is usually as I said something like accessing a database but then there's also, uh, also all other kinds of stuff that is going to happen some an example would be if you're going to place an order somewhere well if you're going to place an order it's very likely that you're going to have to grab some product information, some user information, create like an order instance or whatever represents your order, uh, persist that to the database, send out an email or like uh, maybe even dispatch some events to external systems are going to do something like all of that stuff is going to happen. Uh, and these are of course the same sorts of things that I like to talk about on this channel because it's just not the thing that you're going to see. Uh, you're, you're never going to see. I'm, I have to this day never seen a tutorial. Uh, on where we where they ever cover this the the, the stuff where like because it, it sounds great right to say that separation of concerns is a good thing and you should have a single responsibility principle and all that good stuff but in reality it's practically impossible to always follow that rule depending on how you define it because if you are and this is the thing right for me who's been working for a while and for most of the people that I work with who have been working for a while they understand the essence of what we're trying to achieve here. They understand that separation of concerns doesn't mean that, or like single responsibility principle, it's just not, pra you, you're, it's impossible to write code that always abides by that rule. If your definition is that a method or whatever you're doing is only supposed to do one thing. But here's the kicker. If you really understand what's going on, or that's at least what, from my perspective, you understand that the the thing that becomes a problem in this scenario with placing an order is that you might put all that logic in, say, the same class or the same piece, of the same block of logic. All of this stuff is just kind of in there. And that is the anti-pattern because now you're basically creating a situation where the order endpoint or like the controller method that you've declared or action handler, depending on which language you're using, uh, knows all this stuff. You might have raw database queries and like you building up all of this um, logic inside of the method. And this is where dependency injection becomes the, it, it is like the best thing ever because as soon as you get to that point when you you get, a, you get into a situation where the piece of logic that you're trying to execute, it might have multiple pieces that very much like they're they're required to work together in order to execute the logic that you want to achieve, but each individual piece is not necessarily coupled. Then what you really want to do is that, that that's from my perspective what the separation of concerns rule is, because now instead of having, because this is a classic rookie mistake, you put all of that business logic in the controller method. 
that's not something you should do. A, 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 a senior or like a professional software developer would identify that as a problem and they would pull out, say, the access to get the user and the products and creating the order and sending out the email into other p modules, either services or something like that, where basically what you do is that you move all the business logic f that is entailed in each of these pieces into its own class or its own function or something like that, and then you depend use dependency injection or you import this logic into the controller. So the controller, all that it really does, it acts as the as the aggregation point or the glue is a good analogy where it's just all the controller method needs to know is how to get all of these dependencies of the all this uh, logic that it depends on and in which order to execute it and then it's like it's an abstraction layer like it doesn't know how to execute this stuff it doesn't own the logic it just references something that does and th that's where i g get a little bit confused because i cannot like, i i understand the idea uh, like if we're gonna go like really philosophical here, if you have, if you were to be really diehard about separation of concerns, well, then dependency injection is something that in theory you should not have to do. But this is the thing, right? If it's kind of the same thing with as with encapsulation, where you have this idea that well, everything that is owned by a specific object or something like that. Well, it should be private to just that object. And that in theory works really well because then you get this kind of, you, you abstract away the necessity of knowing what's happening inside the object from whoever is the consumer of the object. And the same thing goes with functions and so forth. It's very nice. That's what abstractions are all about, right? The problem with that is that as I was saying, the only time that works in its most pure form is if the logic that you are in, like the function that you are creating or the object that you are creating has no external dependency. It's as I like to call a leaf. It's a leaf in in your dependency graph. That is the, I mean, that's the ideal case. Uh, an example would be, uh, you might have a user object. Well, you, I, it's going to be extraordinarily, or usually at the very least, rare for you to find that the user object needs some other information like the emails or the orders or something like that. It's a leaf. You can instantiate a user without having to depend on something else. And that makes a that, that's a perfect example of separation of concerns because in, and encapsulation in, in essence as well, depending on how you do it, of course, because there's no external thing. But that's why I'm saying that in theory, yes, that's what you're going for because that makes the user the most easiest thing as in the world. But as I said, you, it's impossible to do that uh, throughout the entire system because at some point, and it's, uh, there are some entities that are basically just aggregations or, uh, or they're always dependent on some other entity. An example, as I said, would be the order. You would not be able to create an order without depending on other pieces of information because they are like the order is just an aggregation of a user and several other products and some other stuff. So what I want you to take away from this is that I don't, I, I, at a very, very broad philosophical, in a very broad philosophical discussion, yes, separation of concerns opposes dependency injection due to the fact that if you have true separation of concerns, and you follow the other rules, such as ha having a, sing a single, respons a single uh, responsibility principle, you should have logic, or you should strive at the very least to have logic that doesn't depend on something else, or it should be its own isolated piece. It's what I call a leaf. But as I've said before, it's impossible to achieve that throughout an entire system. It's not going to work. Uh, it's actually, uh, and that's where dependency injection becomes a very useful thing, where instead, because you could go the other way, which would be an another anti-pattern. If you were really diehard about separation of concerns, well, you could make the argument and say, well, I'll just duplicate all the, like, as with the order, for example, you could, in theory, copy-paste all the logic that happens within the emails, the users, and the product uh, domain, or, like, their modules into the order, so the order is, like, it doesn't really depend on anything outside of itself, but then you break the dry principle, then, then you're not dry, right? And that causes other sorts of problems, and that's where dependence injection, like, it's the heart and soul of why it's so useful, because now I simply extract the information so that each of these different modules they have separation of concerns they become their own leaves so as much as possible 
and then whoever needs to consume them can just dependency inject them. And that is not just useful from logical structure, it's also useful in a testing perspective where you might have things such as email services and things like that where in a production environment you want to actually send an email but when you're running tests you want to create like a mock or a stub implementation and inject it so that you can test the order logic without having to send an email because when you call the email uh, functionality that you injected it's just gonna do something like log or like just ignore whatever it's supposed to be doing. So those are my thoughts, and I think that you like separation of concerns. I don't on general in general. I don't think it opposes dependency injection. I think it's the reverse. I think the dependency injection and separation of concerns are they are equally important in order to create well structured logic. Have a great day.